Okay, so that installs successfully completed, and you can see here um, just some information about how to access the control panel. Um, if you try and access it straight after the message comes up, it sometimes doesn't resolve. So probably good to give an extra minute or two just to make sure that's kind of happened. I'm not sure why that is, but I just experienced that just before. So we copy and paste this URL and uh, put it into a browser. So the first time you go here, well actually any time you go here, it's going to pretty much say your connection's not private because it's looking to go to a HTTPS from here, although you don't yet have HT, uh, SSL security applied to the server. If you did already, you probably won't have this problem, but um, until you do, you're going to have this issue. So of course we just go advanced, we click through and we get into it. It's something that users won't see as long as you apply proper SSL to your websites that you host on here. Um, so we got some information from the panel here about admin or password to use. So just type in admin and oop, should go the next one down. And it logs you in like that. Like that is so fast basically uh, to get in. Um, what I really like about it is it is so fast. That's really it. It's fast, clean minimal um, and everything you're doing here really is fast so some of the main things you might want to do is um, uh, run some backups that's pretty cool you can do that you can kind of use the cron to run backups on here um, and even you know upcloud does have backups that it does for you but they come at an extra cost you can probably run your own backups through uh, the vesta control panel if you set them up right and be a bit smart about it um, obviously databases easy to access here so it's already set up a database called admin default um, you've got the ability to go into PHP my admin so if you click on that it opens that up and it comes up automatically now this is the kind of thing a few people have struggled with is they go into PHP my admin and they think there's like a root user big mistake you're never going to get a root user especially on a remote server it's just not what you should be doing or looking for uh, secondly they think that um, you know, we can use the admin and password here, but that's for the control panel. No, we've got passwords set up and user accounts set up for the databases, each user per database. There is no God access or root access across all the databases. So you can see this database here. If you went in and you edited it, you could see that admin default. Okay, that's who it is. If we go admin default, that's the username. So put that into there. That's not going to work, right? <laughs> you think it is because there's no password set, but it's obviously set a password for you. So what we're going to do here is just set up a password here. So um, pretty simple password. You know, it's not going to stay there for very long. So we're just going to go here and save it. And if I was to go in here now and type it in, you can then straight ahead access PHP my admin. So if you had other um, databases showing up in here, you probably wouldn't be able to access them. There's only one user per database. As far as I know, there might be differently, but as you can see in here, there's no kind of way to access the users. So it is kind of quarantined off like that. And that's kind of a good thing. You probably don't want to have um, a user that can go across databases because if you ever get compromised, you want to kind of limit the damage that gets done really and stick it just to one database, um, you know, especially when it comes down to MySQL injections. You don't want it cross-infecting. That's really, really bad for you. Um, so yeah, that's quickly how to get into the MySQL. Uh, mail, you can set up the mail servers if you want. I've typically kind of done mail off-site, say Zoho or Yandex, because I don't really want to have it on my hosting servers previously, but with cloud, you get a lot more space and things to play with, so that's something that maybe you might want to do is set up mail servers for people, but, you know, with some uh, hosting, some people's business email domains, they kind of put everything in their email addresses and it almost becomes a cloud box and your space kind of balloons out and um, that's why I kind of really don't like having to manage people's mail servers and having that kind of outsourced to another company to do so to speak. Um, you can see here web domains this is just basically the IP address that we have so if we went to this IP address we'd see any site in the public um, HTML folder um, and if you register domains which you can do here 
you can then get them coming up as well. So I believe there's a way to register multiple domain names and point them to certain folders and then uh, set up name servers and DNS entries accordingly so you could have um, several websites sharing the cloud server box that we've in, in, uh, initiated here. So lastly we've got the DNS of course that works hand in hand with it um, and this is just all the kind of common applications that you have here or common areas we have heaps more stuff here. Um, this will tell you the packages that are need to be installed, and these are all the latest. So you can see here, um, you know, you can install these guys or whatnot. If there's new ones coming up, it'll tell you. Um, you can add packages if you want to, but you need to know what you're doing. It's a bit advanced. Um, IP address, of course, that comes up pretty much in the domains before. Graphs. Um, you can see uh, kind of you can geek out on getting all the service stats here right now there's nothing in here because we just spun the box up um, getting statistics and things like that um, you can even set up a firewall um, or several of them onto your d web addresses or on the whole thing I'm not going to go into detail about the firewalls that's really kind of getting heavy in the security end of things um, definitely worth doing and setting up a firewall here and even in your application setting up firewalls if you can to say like um, WordFence plugin for WordPress has a web application firewall that you can set up which is really good to use as well and if you go to apps you go straight to soft delicious so you can go in there and install these applications into your server with you know wizards and one click installations which is quite useful um, and then going into the server here again you can see the servers that we have available Apache 2, Nginx and things like that so there's a lot of um, advanced configuration uh, stuff you can do here and that's just really like a surface level look at Vesta CP and there are heaps more stuff you can do in it and of course you could always open up the bash shell and go in there and do things yourself but like I said I see this as a nice way to kind of compromise and make um, some workflow more efficient um, so let's just say if we wanted to go to this web server right now I'm pretty sure we wouldn't see anything but let's just do it for fun so if we go in here yeah we're not going to see anything so what I'm going to do in the next uh, video uh, tutorial or next session is just go ahead and install the WordPress package and we're going to create a database and hook that up and we're just going to run the uh, WordPress installation just from a subdirectory from this IP address basically uh, just do it simple first